स्टूडेंट्स कुछ बात करेंगे अबाउट द सिग्नलिंग इन अ टेलीफोन नेटवर्क स्टूडेंट्स इन द बिगिनिंग द सिग्नलिंग नेटवर्क वर ऑल्ड सर्किट स्विच द कंट्रोल सिग्नल दैट वर रिक्वायर्ड टू एक्चुअली कंप्लीट अ वॉइस कॉल दे वर ऑल एनालॉग स्टूडेंट्स सर्किट स्विच मीन्स वी नीड अ कनेक्शन सेटअप देन द वॉइस इज कम्युनिकेटेड एंड देन यू टेयर डाउन द कनेक्शन स्टूडेंट्स इन द ओल्ड इन डेज वी नीड we needed the same sort of signaling network but we we were doing all of this manually students there was a central office with an operator sitting out it with actual circuits and if you have seen the history of telecommunication or something like that then you would know that this operator was actually connected to all the different subscribers and when a call was required to be connected one of the subscribers pick, picks up the phone and it used to call um this particular operator the operator based on the destination identifier or the destination subscriber identifier it used to actually connect um the actual circuit from one subscriber to the other and then both of the parties could talk now students when the uh, discussion was complete when the telephone call was complete and the connection was no longer required um, one of the parties again used to make a call to this operator to actually disconnect this connection so this was our first sort of type of signaling network in which we did in band signaling students in band signaling is the one in which you use the same circuit for your signaling or control information as well as your data also students our initial signaling networks were analog they were manual um, and they were uh, used to actually carry the data on the same network as well students with the technical advancements the the signal networks then became automatic today pretty much all of our signaling is done um, automatically there is nothing manual that's to do with the with a signal network in a telephone network students um, rotary telephones were invented as well and these rotary telephones they sent a digital signal defining each digit in a multi digit um, telephone number and students as i told you as the telephone networks evolved um into a complex network the functionality of the signal system increased as well and the signaling system was not just used for connecting the two subscribers in a particular case it was um able to control things like busy tones the ring tones the management and monitoring of an ongoing call and a lot of other um functionality also uh, became part of our signaling network in a telephone system as well options as you can see we have got a network out here which uses two different paths one for the data transfer and the other one for the for the signaling network students so in the case of data transfer network we can carry multimedia information for the most part you know students a circuit switch network it can also be a packet switch network but most part at circuit switch network this network follows the same type of protocols and model as other networks that we have discussed so this is a, is a circuit switched or a packet switched network aap logo ne circuit switch jo hai usko ek bahut detail mein padha hai we'll talk about packet switched um, although we have introduced it to you we'll talk about them in detail in the future discussions as well and students this data data network it actually carries the actual data so your multimedia information it can be voice it can be data as well so friends in this case the signal network is is basically a packet switch network and i will introduce you to signal system system 7 and you'll see that in the case of signal system 7 or ss7 that we still use in our telephone networks it uses a similar format to the osi or a tcp ip protocol suite so friends um in this case your subscribers are connected to your signaling points or sps as soon as the link between the telephone set and the sp is the common for both the networks so both for both data network and your stp this is one single link that connects the subscriber to the signaling point so since the signal point it then uses um, this sp to connect to the stp or signal transfer point and the signal transfer point it receives and forwards the signaling messages students this is then um, also connected to a service control point 
and it controls the whole operation of the uh, signaling network. Students, so there are other systems such as a database center or you know an IN intelligent network that we can include in here to actually uh, provide the information to this entire network as well and you see this in the form of the database node out here. So in this case, you are um, looking at an example of a network in which we've got a separate signaling network and a separate data network. Of students, this is our signaling system seven or SS7 signaling protocol that we normally use in our telephone networks today. Students, as you can see, the protocol is very similar to the five layer uh, internet model or TCP IP protocol suite model that we have discussed earlier. Uh, layers out here have got different names though. The first layer or the physical layer is called MTP message transfer part, message transfer or message transport part, MTP level one. And it, it, it contains our physical layer specs and mostly it has got a T1 standard, which you know by now it is a 1.54 megabits per second um, transmission medium that we have got. Uh, it's got a DC zero service which is 64 kilobits per second. So then you've got data link layer, um, you've got message transport part level two, and this provides services such as packetizing, normal in the case of data link layer. Then you've got the network layer as message transport part level three, and it uses the end-to-end -end datagram or packet connectivity. And students, then you've got the upper layers. So your telephone user part or TUP it is responsible for setting up the voice calls. Then you've got the um, TCAP or transaction capabilities application protocol, and it provides the remote calls um, that let an application program um, on a computer invoke a procedure on a different computer. So basically, this is for remote data connectivity. And students, then you've got the ISAP or ISDN user port, and it replaces your uh, telephone user port to provide services that are similar to an ISDN network as and when, as and when required. Students, you also have a signaling connection control point, which is signaling control point um, for this whole signaling system seven protocol.